Welcome, Watchers of Illusion, to my Castle of Confusion. It's the 8th of November. I have another dizzy game for you, and it's on the Spectrum. Check this out. Yes, it's Dizzy, Prince of the Yoke Folk, which came after Spellbound Dizzy, which was a big game, a very big game. But this brings it back to a smaller scale, and it's actually quite a fun little game. Um, the uh, puzzles, I think, are a little bit more simplistic than we're used to, but we can forgive it for that, because it's a dizzy game. So, to get out of this room, we need to just do an assortment of things, put the leaves down, set fire to the leaves, put the fire out with the bucket of water. Simplistic, yes? Good. Right. I actually played this game originally on the Commodore Amiga, because I think by that point I'd actually was no longer a Spectrum owner. I think I actually got rid of my Specky at this point and I was actually a uh, Commodore Amiga man. And the uh, Amiga version, very, very colourful, but let down by some massively precision jumping. And I don't understand why they wanted to put precision jumping in. Anyway, the one thing I find lacking from this, and it's a bit of a shame, is that lovely chomping animation. When he eats food in Spellbound Dizzy, uh, you kind of lose that here in Prince of the Oak Folk, and it's a bit of a step backwards, I think, and it's a bit of a shame. Um, I guess maybe they've done it to, to sort of make the game flow a little better. When you use the fruit in Spellbound, it did kind of slow you down while you had to wait for Dizzy to eat them, but I kind of like that. I, I thought it just added another dimension to the character. Uh, now you see there you've got a health bar in the top right-hand corner, and to replenish that, you need to eat cherries. Uh, you need to collect 20 cherries, which is a bit better than 30. Um, and then I think you, I, f I remember rightly, it's so that Daisy can bake a cherry pie, as you do. Anyway, the puzzle element is pretty much the standard Dizzy affair. Um, and I just love it. I mean, look at the graphics on it again. Nice big sprites there. Dizzy looks a, little, a bit more wholesome than uh, than he has done in the past. You've got the nice surround that separates each screen and uh, you, the puzzle element is still intact. I think it's it's quite clever. I like it. But look at the sprites here. Now on the Amiga version you've got um, a lot more sort of cartoony sprites. The Grim Reapers bopping away to the theme tune. I think that's really right, quite cool. Um, you've got to solve some puzzles like trying to get Pogi here into the crate. That's that's a puzzle in itself. Obviously the crate now is on the floor. We need to find out how to put him in there. So we've got to lure him in somehow. Some of the puzzles kind of sort themselves out when you pick up an item you think, ah, that goes there. That, so, so the lateral thinking here is actually quite good. Now, <laughs> okay, that wasn't meant to happen. Now in previous games, if you did that with Dizzy, he would have just jumped up onto that ledge and stayed there. But now you can actually overshoot ledges a bit too easily, which kind of lets it down a little bit. It can be a bit frustrating sometimes with the rolling, um, which again, there you go. Prime example. How ironic. Um, I find the constant rolls can be a little bit annoying, uh, very frustrating at times. And there you go, just lost a life to a bat. Yes, indeed. But um, we picked up that uh, bridge, ACME bridge thingy earlier on. So we'll go and use that because that is going to be used here, in fact. Nice big gap. And he loves it when a plan comes together. It's a nice little reference to Hannibal Smith there from the A-Team. God rest your soul. Anyway, we are going to have a little explore while we're here. And we can see here that there's influences from Treasure Island, Dizzy, with here with the trees and the walkways. Now we can jump across onto those clouds, but I'm not going to, <laughs> but never mind. I want to try and find a way over to the castle in a few minutes as well because there's more in the castle that you can do. You see it's not as big a game, There's, I mean there are still quite a few screens here but not quite as big, um, which you know, it, su it suits maybe, maybe the younger player. Now, 
I don't know if it's just me, but my younger brain would have been able to sort out a lot of these puzzles a lot better. See, I'm trying to see f whatever that is. It says fluffle on it, so I just immediately go, oh, I can put that in the crate. It doesn't work like that, Rich. Come on, wake up. Um, now, I think, to be fair, the only Dizzy games I never completed back when they were released was uh, Spellbound Dizzy and Crystal Kingdom Dizzy, just, just purely because they were so big. I did finish this one on the Amiga, and it was a great little game. I think if you put your mind to it and you actually go through it from start to finish, you can probably finish this one in about an hour or something like that. Uh, guys, I'd love to hear it. if you've played this game and you've completed it. Give me your times. Give me your times because I think that'd be really quite a cool thing to, to hear how you guys got on with this one. I mean, compare it to something like Treasure Island Dizzy maybe. Okay, you only had one life with Treasure Island Dizzy, but you can still sort of put your benchmark against that or even Fantasy World Dizzy if you like. And here we are at the Pearly Gates, just randomly up in the clouds. Right, so we need to find something for St. Peter. He's lost something. What could it be? We'll figure this out as we go. Right. So we're going to hop along the clouds here. It's the only way you can sort of get to and from that that character there. Um, we're going to go up into the treehouse to get a bit of height. And go up a bit further. Oh, we can't actually get up there, which is... Yeah, I'm going to fall off now. And we're going to go all the way down. How frustrating is that? And oh, the bat nearly killed me again. Yes, yeah, so you've got to be careful with that because if you if you stand still too long and a bad guy comes along, it will just sap all your energy. One go, that's it. Life lost. However, I like the Dizzy series. It's kind of got a soft spot in my heart and I've really fudged that up. That was great. So yes, you can die by drowning, as you do. Um, the flames, I think, do sap you of energy but they're not quite as painful as they have been in the past now I'm going to try and get across this way oh, that's more like it okay I like it. the other thing I like about Dizzy as well on the spectrum at least is that you can um, control him with Z X and space and enter which obviously is left and right space is jump and enter is to pick up items now I just picked up a harp I wonder what that could be used for um, the Amiga version I believe was just joystick only and that was where the precision jumping was a bit of a pain in the bum, especially if you had a sensitive joystick that just you just needed to nudge it ever so slightly in the uh, left or right uh, diagonal, and uh, you would just jump. Now that is frustrating to say the least. This game on the Spectrum didn't quite have the precision jumping that you needed, but it, it made up for that with the obsessive rolling, which still was quite annoying. Anyway. I don't think this was Dizzy's finest hour by any stretch of the uh, spectrum there, excuse the uh, pun. Uh, I think, to be honest, his heyday was probably Fantasy World Dizzy, was one of my favourites. And Treasure Island Dizzy, still outstanding in my mind, is one of the best. Now we've got some holy cheese there, so I'm going to go and put, try and put that in the box to try and coax the Huffle. The Huffle? <laughs> or is he a Puffle? Huffle Puffle, I don't know, it's too Harry Potter for me. Anyway. We now have the ingredient we need, I believe, to get Pogi the Fluffle. Huffle? <laughs> I can't remember what he's called. I know his name's Pogi. We'll leave it at that. Uh, well, so we're going to put the cheese in the box, or I'm going to try and give it to him. No, 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 I'm too close. There we go. Right, put the cheese in the box. There we go, and in he goes. Now, and he was hiding a cherry as well, so you would have had to have done that to finish the game anyway. Right, now, I think think if I remember rightly we go and put this little guy down somewhere to progress can you guess where mm. we're going there now anyway but this is another little puzzle you've got to figure out and I like the fact that there's puzzle solving in the game I think they've kind of they've kept the puzzle solving absolutely perfectly fine there's just I don't know there's just something missing for me in this game, and I don't really know what, but it's... I I think because the Oliver Twins weren't involved as much with the Dizzy franchise, with the later games at least, I just didn't feel that that magic was still there. They had a certain charm with the game, I think, with the character. They kind of bought a certain flair to the games, and, and that's kind of missing a little bit, I find, in these later ones, which is a shame, but... At the end of the day, it's a still a dizzy game. It's still good fun. I would still recommend that you play it and give it give it your own thoughts. Um, I mean, I've I don't I don't dislike it. 
but I don't think it's one of the best ones. And there's an off-board motor there. So what do you think we could use that for? But, uh, yeah. It's, it's just missing something for me this time round. And it, I think maybe the series had ground itself out a little bit. I don't know. Uh, I mean, that looks very Fantasy World Dizzy there, doesn't it? It's kind of like rehashing stuff that's already been done. And there was nothing really new brought to the plate here. With Spellbound Dizzy, the size of the game, the animation changes, all of that made the game its own entity. Whereas this one kind of it feels like it's taken, you know, several steps back. And I think that's a real shame. But, yeah, it's not, not Dizzy's finest hour. But we are almost at the end of our Dizzy um, adventure together. We've got uh, Crystal Kingdom Dizzy and a couple of the sub-games, like Down the Rapids and Bubble Dizzy, we've still got those to go, and Dizzy Panic. So we will go through those as well and finish off our Dizzy adventure. There's also the Dizzy game on the NES as well. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in as always, and I shall catch you on the next video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Ta-ta for now!